Hi, everyone. I'd like to talk to you about offering virtual makerspace programming. And this doesn't have to be something that's high tech. You don't have to have any specialty equipment in your library or at home, depending on where you are creating this virtual programming. You don't have to have a 3D printer or a laser cutter or even specialty equipment like a button maker if you want to create creative and fun maker activities for your library patrons. Odds are your librarians or you already have some craft hobbies that would be perfect for virtual makerspace programming. And so why not teach your patrons how to create something and do a hobby that you're already passionate about or that your librarians are already passionate about. So really all you have to do is gather your supplies and your equipment, your tools that you will need for whatever activity ahead of time. So you have everything in front of you and then go ahead and start recording a video. Whether you want to go live on Facebook, I probably wouldn't suggest that for the very first one. You might wanna get your feet wet by creating a pre-recorded video using your webcam in something like Zoom. I'm using Zoom as a web conference where it's just me. And incidentally, that's how I've been recording most of the lectures and screencasts for this course using Zoom. I really like it. It's very easy to use and very easy to turn the recording feature on and off. So I'm here in, in my home office and I have all of my supplies and equipment here to talk to you about a maker activity that I really love. I really enjoy creating jewelry using polymer clay because it's fun to use, it's easy to deal with, and it's really inexpensive. You can get a package of polymer clay for around $2. If you're ordering them in bulk on Amazon, you can certainly get them for under $2. But at Michael's or AC Moore or Hobby Lobby, they are somewhere in between $1.50 and $3. And there are two main brands. Primo and Sculpey, and they pretty much work the same for beginners. I would suggest using Sculpey because it's much softer and easier to mold. Primo is a little bit harder to get going. You have to really knead it um, at the beginning to get it soft, but either one is pretty easy to use. And so that's what I use to create jewelry uh, like this necklace. This is one of my favorite necklaces, and I have made this in all different colors and eye combinations. So I'll just show you a few of them. And I'll give you a picture as well. But this is a lot of fun and hopefully this activity will give you some inspiration for how you can create your own virtual maker programming. So I'll just tell you a little bit more about the polymer clay. They work the same. You mold whatever it is that you want to create or you sculpt it, and then you put it in the oven or a toaster oven, depending on the brand. For Primo, and it says it right on every one of the packages, um, they're, they're both at 275 degrees. But for Sculpey, it's 15 minutes for every quarter inch of thickness that your project is. So something like this would be about 15 minutes. And then Primo is 30 minutes per quarter inch thickness. So you just have to remember which brand you're using and how much time. But that's the clay and it pretty much always looks the same. It's no matter what the brand divided into fourths, into four sections that you can cut off and make measurements in that way. So if you're watching another online tutorial and they tell you to just use one section, that's how you know what that is. But what I really love about polymer clay is you don't have to be an artist in order to create something really cute or fun because there are all sorts of molds that are available online. And you can just do a quick Amazon search for polymer clay molds and it will come back with a whole slew of molds that, that you can purchase just once and then you can create the same thing over and over again. So I have a mold for this kitty necklace, uh, for a couple of them actually, and then for smaller ones. These molds I love, they were created by 
an artist, Raven Cotino, on He's got an Instagram and an Etsy, and I'll provide that URL for you as well. But here are a couple of other molds that I have used to create necklaces. And then this one I got from Amazon, and I have used it to create these types of necklaces. So if this is something that you want to adopt for your library, you might want to go on Amazon and see what kinds of molds that you can get. They run anywhere from five to $5 for mold to $80, depending on what kind of mold it is. Other tools that you will need, and I'll show you, I'll take a picture of my work area so that you can see everything laid out. Once again, this is a pretty inexpensive craft hobby to have, especially after you purchase the couple of tools that you will need. This is a polymer clay cutter so that you can cut through those different sections and cut off pieces. So that is something that you'll probably always use each time that you create something. These are wire cutters that are used for jewelry making so that you can cut through the different uh, chain lengths in chains to make necklaces. And then these are needle nose pliers, which you can use just one, or I prefer to have two so that I can hold a jump ring or something else like that with one and then have the chain on the other and be able to do that. But you can certainly make do with just one. So those are the equipment or tools that you will need. And then for supplies, you will need polymer clay at around $2. You will need some parchment paper, to line a cookie sheet or if you're using the toaster oven the little cookie sheet in there so that the clay doesn't get stuck to the metal when it's in the oven i also like to use glittery or shiny pigments so this is a powdered pigment you can also use eyeshadow which i have used in the past as well so you can get these these pigments this is one by pearlex called 688 misty lavender and you can get that for about $5. If you are creating one of these fawn kitties using a mold like this, you can see that they have two indentations for the different eyes. And so what you would wanna put in there are glass cabochons or cabochons come in all different kinds. They come in plastic. You can buy whole packs of cabochons of different colored eyes for packs of 100 for about $10. And I am using 12 millimeter size cabochons for these kitty necklaces. And then to attach the chain, you will want either eye pins to stick in the polymer clay or what I really like are these, they're called bales and they're called spoon bales because of their shape but I just super glue them on the back of the necklace at the end so that then I can put the jump rings and the chain through it. And then you will need four jump rings. Jump rings and these bales are also super cheap. They're probably cost about seven cents, five cents a piece. You buy them in packs of like 400 or 500. And then you will need one clasp. And again, these are super cheap probably seven or 10 cents, and you buy those as well in a pack, and some super glue. And then the last part, of course, is the chain. And I like to buy spools of chain so that I don't run out. So I'm using bead landings, 12 yards of this silver chain, nothing fancy. I bought chain in pink as well, which is really nice. And then they also sell antiqued looking chain and that has a nice effect too. Before I started this video, I storyboarded everything that I wanted to include. I prepared notes for my scripts. I have all of that in front of me so that I can go through my checklist and make sure that I'm including everything on the video. And if you forget anything at the end, you can always create a little caption or call out or speech bubble in the middle of your video in post-production to put that in as well. Okay, and I have preheated the oven. So let's get going. I'm gonna move my workspace a little bit so that you can see it. 
I always put down some craft paper for whatever I'm doing because odds are I will spill the glue or something else on my workspace. So for this project, I am using a Primo polymer clay in the shade of Wisteria, which is one of my favorite colors. And for something this size, you can fill this whole mold with just two sections of the clay. And so this is how you would divide the clay using that razor tool. And then before you can just start molding something with clay, you have to work it a little bit and do some kneading of the clay until it becomes soft and pliable. And really this is just a matter of playing around with it and doing a couple of these projects and then you'll definitely get the hang of it very quickly. If you're gonna be using a lot of Primo colors, you may want to have some of this on hand as something extra. And it is created by Sculpey, but it's a clay softener. So you could just put a drop or two and that will cut down on the time that you have to knead it. It'll get softer faster. Okay, I'm back and I have kneaded my clay enough that it is pretty pliable at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my mold and prepare it. So what I like to do, as I said, is add glitter to just about everything. So I am going to do that. Okay, next I'm ready to put in my eyes. Okay, so I'm just gonna put them in upside down and then I can start putting in my clay. So here's my first pass. It's definitely not pretty. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of smush down the clay and try and work it all into one piece without disturbing the glass cabochons too much because I don't want them to move around. Okay, now we wanna let this sit for about five or 10 minutes and that way it will kind of settle in and get all of the fine lines and engravings that are on the front. And what I like to do to make it easier to pull out of the mold afterward is I like to put it in the freezer for those five minutes or so. So I'm gonna pause the recording and go do that. Okay, and we're back. This is fresh out of the freezer. You only have a few minutes until the clay starts to get warm and soft again. So you need to get going right away. But something that I like to do is just clean up the back a little bit after it is semi-frozen because that is a lot easier. So you can just drag this along and pull off all of the extra clay and make the back of your necklace flat. You don't want to gouge the clay. You just want to drag it across the top. But if you do, the great thing about clay is it's very forgiving. So you can just put it back on. Okay, and that's what it looks like. Cleaned up a bit. All right, now we're ready to pop this out. Okay, and all we'll do is just start going around and loosening it a little bit. And then you want to try and get it out all in one fluid motion and put it down. Okay, and there it is. Now, if you have any extra, as you can see up here at the top, there is a little bit extra. You can just kind of pull that off a little bit at a time, or you could take something like a toothpick. You can also get one of these, which is specifically made for making etchings within clay, but I do like to use it to clean up a little bit. As I said, it's definitely not necessary. You can use something like a toothpick or just pull off the edges and then round it with your fingers. So I'm just gonna smooth that a little bit, smooth it over here. And then if there are any other imperfections that you wanna fix, for example, this eye down here has a little bit more room than I would like. So I'm just gonna take some of those shavings and just put them on that area. Okay, so I put them on that area, but you can see it doesn't look exactly like the rest of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mold it around there a little bit 
with my finger and then I'm gonna take either the toothpick or this and just kind of press it down, press it down with my fingers. And then I'll take this and I'll just kind of press in some feathered lines like the rest of it. Okay, and now that looks a lot more consistent. Okay, and anything else, any other flaws or inconsistencies that you see, you can kind of take care of them now and then maybe adding some lines. And then one more thing that I like to do is add a little more glitter. especially to those areas that we touched up. Okay, and now this is, this is all ready to go. So I'm gonna go put this in the oven for 30 minutes and I'll be back. Hi everyone, we are back and this is what we've got out of the oven. Okay, so we're looking pretty good now to make it into a necklace. Now what we want to do is we want to super glue the bales onto the ears of the kitty, just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got those on there. I'm just going to let that set up for a minute. And you don't want to put it flat down on your craft paper because it will stick. So I always kind of balance it on the toothpick. Okay, and in the meantime, we can get going on preparing the chain. So what I usually do is I usually have a necklace that I like and I just copy the exact length of that chain when I'm when I'm cutting chains. So I'm gonna take this off. So this one is going to have two separate chains rather than just one, like a lot of necklaces. And really what you wanna do, no matter what the length is, that you just make sure that you cut both sides equal. And this is about eight, eight and a half inches on either side. Okay, so what you once you cut the first one with your little wire cutters, you can just line it up for the second one. So it doesn't have to be exact, but you wanna get as close as possible so that your necklace doesn't end up sitting lopsided. Okay, so now I've got my two lengths of chain. And so on one of them, I'm going to put a jump ring and now I'm gonna use my needle nose pliers to open up the jump ring just a little bit and then put the chain through it and then close it back up. And here is where the having two needle nose pliers comes in really handy. That is much easier. Okay, so now we've got one end and we will wait to put the other jump ring on until we have the necklace ready. And then on the other end, we're gonna get the clasp part ready. So I'm gonna take another jump ring, open it up with my pliers put it on the chain, grab the clasp, and put the clasp on it, and then close it back up. Okay, so now we've got the clasp end all set. So we're gonna take another jump ring, open it up, put it on the chain, the other end of the chain from the clasp, and leave that open. Grab the other jump ring, put it on the other end of the other chain. Okay, and now that is ready. Get this out of the way. And let's see how we're doing here. These are pretty set. So now what we can do is we can put one of the jump rings through one of the bales, grab our pliers and close that up. Okay, so now half the necklace is done. We'll grab the other jump ring ready chain, put it through the other bale, grab our pliers and close that up. And now we have a completed necklace. Okay, and there it is, our completed necklace. So I hope that this craft video inspired you to come up with some virtual maker programming for your patrons.